Today we are going to be talking about why a teenager would bury her baby in her backyard. This is Brooke Skyler Richardson. Most of the time, she went by Skyler, which is her middle name. She was born and raised in Ohio, a very small town with a population of only 5,000 people known as Carlisle. Brooke had a brother named Jackson, and her parents were Kim and Scott Richardson. From the outside looking in, they had the perfect little life. Growing up, Skylar and Jackson were both really athletic and into sports. Jackson played on the football team, and Skylar was a cheerleader. She was a flyer, to be exact. A flyer was the person who got tossed up in the air. She took cheerleading very seriously. Skylar also had really good grades and was an overall well-liked student. She was on the student council and tried to be involved in as many extracurricular activities as she could. However, the pressure of being a flyer, the person thrown up into the air, really got to Skylar. She struggled with an eating disorder known as bulimia. It was bad, it was taking over her whole life. Her parents even said that it controlled 90% of her life. According to her mom, it started when she was very young, around 12 years old. She remembers that at that age, Skylar didn't even want to buy gum, because it had too many calories in it. There's been a lot of criticism of Skylar's parents regarding whether they did enough to help or whether they inadvertently encouraged her eating disorder. Especially her mom, she has been accused of being very vain, overly focused on body image, and pressuring Skylar to also care excessively about her appearance. Her mom attributes some of this pressure to Skylar's role as a flyer in cheerleading. Perhaps that played a part. Skylar's parents insist that they tried everything they could to assist her. They had her see doctors, therapists, and nutritionists, but unfortunately, nothing seemed to help. Skylar was also someone who preferred to keep things to herself maintaining a sense of privacy. She wasn't particularly forthcoming with information, especially when it came to her parents. This aspect is a significant part of this case. Skylar doesn't seem to feel comfortable going to her parents. Eventually, Skylar was diagnosed with body dysmorphia, and she was in a really dark place when it came to her body. So, in July of 2016, Skylar started dating one of her friend's cousins, whose name was Trey. They dated for a brief period of time, nothing too serious. Eventually, they ended the relationship. Going into 2017, Skylar had a new boyfriend. He was a junior at her high school, and his name was Brandon. Skylar really liked Brandon, and their relationship was the most serious one she had yet. Her parents also liked him and thought he was a good influence on her. Skylar seemed very, very happy to them. She appeared to be in the best mental state she had been in for a really long time. Additionally, she was gaining some weight, which made her parents genuinely happy. They considered that perhaps Skylar's weight gain was a result of her happiness, maybe due to being in a healthy relationship. They even thought that her eating disorder might be under control. As a result, Skylar and her family went on a beach vacation. Her parents observed her looking happy and healthy. They believed she was on the path to becoming a healthier, happier person. As things were getting more serious with Brandon, her mom considered whether Skylar should start using birth control. Skylar agreed and they went to the OBGYN on April 26, 2017. When they arrived, her mom waited in the waiting room while Skylar went in. However, when she came out, it was clear that she had been crying. Her mom was understandably worried, but Skylar told her that it was just because it was her first gynecologist appointment and she was nervous, it could be intimidating. While this explanation is somewhat believable, it wasn't the real reason she was crying. In the doctor's office, Skylar was told that she would be giving birth in about 10 weeks. That's what she was informed at the time. However, 
They actually didn't know how far along she was because they weren't able to pinpoint exactly when the baby was conceived. As it turned out, they were off by quite a bit, and she was already 36 weeks along and was very close to giving birth. While she was in there, she cried, she was very upset. She talked with the doctor about it, and they offered to give her some prenatal care. However, she didn't want any of that yet. Instead, she asked the doctor for the birth control prescription because she said her mom would be upset if she came out of the appointment without it. After all, that was their whole reason for going there. So, the doctor made the decision to give her the birth control prescription anyway, even though she was pregnant, and taking birth control could potentially affect the pregnancy. At this point, Skylar was 18, so it's not like they could tell her mom due to confidentiality. They provided her with the birth control as long as she agreed to come back soon for prenatal care. Skylar went home with this information, knowing she was close to giving birth. Just a few days after finding out, she went to prom with Brandon and wore a very skin-tight red dress that she had actually picked out in February. Meanwhile, at this point, Skylar was eight months pregnant. She went to the prom anyway. None of the adults taking pictures, her parents, her date, or even Brandon, noticed. She went to the prom, came home, and resumed life as normal. A few months later, the police showed up at their house, saying they needed to talk to Skylar about something. They assured her she wasn't in trouble, they just needed to speak with her. They brought her into the police department on July 14, 2017. At this point, Skylar's parents had no idea what they could possibly be talking about. Little did they know, the police had received a call from the OBGYN, informing them that Skylar was pregnant. There were also rumors circulating that Skylar had the baby and buried it in her backyard. So, they brought her into the interrogation room, and Skylar started telling them everything. She claimed that two months after her initial appointment, she did go back to the doctor's office and told them that she did have a baby, and it was born stillborn. She then started telling the police about it. She says that on May 7, 2017, she did give birth to a baby girl, and she was born stillborn. She claimed that she started having labor pains early in the day but didn't tell anyone and gave birth to the baby that night in the bathroom of her house. She said that the baby wasn't breathing when it was born, and she checked, but there was no heartbeat. She tried everything she could to save the baby, but nothing worked. After this, she went out into her backyard, dug a small grave, and by herself, buried her stillborn baby. In the interrogation room, she mentioned several times that she did not kill the baby, that the baby was born stillborn. Now, this becomes the biggest part of the case, was the baby born alive or not? After about an hour of questioning, Skylar didn't take long to break it all down for them. They tell her parents, your daughter had a baby. She's been pregnant this whole time and buried it in your backyard, your grandchild. They're just floored. So they walk in, approach Skylar, hug her. She's instantly crying, calling her mom mommy, apologizing, and just confesses to all of it. She told her parents that she named her baby Annabelle and that it was Trey. The friend's cousin she briefly saw before Brandon, whose baby it was. While they were talking to detectives, officers left the station and went to the house to find the baby's body. Once they arrived, it didn't take them long to locate the grave and find the baby. They ended up bringing the baby to a pathologist for examination. Eventually, Skylar and her parents went back home. Six days later, the police called Skylar's parents and asked for Skylar to come back in for more questioning. So, they brought Skylar in, and this is when they told her that there was actually a report from the pathologist saying that it looked like the baby had been burned and had been charred. At first, she starts telling the investigators, 
I have no idea what that could be. I didn't burn the baby. I don't know what they're talking about. However, after being pushed during the interrogation, Skylar eventually changes her story. She says that she may have burned the baby's legs a little bit with a lighter. She claims that she tried to cremate the baby just a little bit using the lighter. The longer she was in there, Skylar started to change her initial story as well, stating that the baby was alive when she was born. She claimed she heard a little bit of gurgling. After talking to Skylar and hearing that the baby could have been alive and that she could have burned it, Skylar was arrested on charges of reckless homicide. She was taken to jail, but of course, she put up bail, so she was able to go home before the trial started. Tonight, the 18-year-old Carlisle mother accused of killing, burning, and burying her newborn baby is now out of jail while she awaits trial. The prosecutor's office had asked for a $1 million bond, as is standard in cases like this, but Judge Donald Oda said because the family had been cooperative throughout this entire process, the bond be set at 50000 This morning, Richardson walked into Judge Donald Oda's court, where she entered a plea of not guilty to murdering her newborn child. Two weeks later, the case was presented to a grand jury, and Schuyler was given new charges. This time, she was charged with aggravated murder, which is a very serious offense in Ohio. This charge carries a life sentence. Additionally, she was charged with involuntary manslaughter, endangering children, and abuse of a corpse. Schuyler's parents thought this was absolutely absurd. They believed there was no way Schuyler harmed the baby, insisting it was born stillborn. Despite these new charges, she was arrested again and taken back to jail. Once more, her parents bailed her out. Soon after, the media caught wind of the story spreading it everywhere. The case entered the gossip realm of the internet, and people were rightfully enraged. Outside the courthouse, protesters demanded the harshest punishment for Skylar. People would even stand outside their house and protest. It was a really intense time. But as time went on, another pathology report came out, and this time it said something completely different. It stated that the initial report was wrong and that there was actually no burning on the baby whatsoever. This becomes a significant part of Schuyler's defense. They believe that Schuyler was coerced into giving a false confession. Initially, she had said, I didn't set fire to the baby, I promise I didn't do it. However, over time, they were the ones who suggested, maybe you tried to cremate it just a little bit? Eventually, she said, yes, I did, with a lighter. The whole thing about hearing the baby gurgle, coming from its mouth, was also suggested by one of the detectives. He proposed, you know, maybe you just heard a gurgle, and she went along with it. Now, whether or not she's telling the truth is up for debate. However, the defense was able to argue that she might have been coerced into giving a false confession, especially with the evidence showing that the baby was not burned. Initially, she was telling the truth, and the whole thing about the lighter isn't real. This certainly raises questions about the authenticity of her entire interrogation. Despite this, the prosecution did not change their stance. They stuck to the charges and maintained that Schuyler admitted to burning the baby in the interrogation room, regardless of what the DNA evidence or autopsy revealed. Skylar was placed on house arrest during this time. She said that she spent a lot of time reading books. Skylar had plans to go to college at the University of Cincinnati, but those plans were put on hold. In July of 2019, the state contacted Skylar's lawyers and tried to make a deal. They said that they would drop the aggravated murder charge if Skylar agreed to plead guilty to the rest of the charges. However, Skylar decided not to take the plea. In her own words, she said, I will not confess to something that I didn't do. She was tempted. She goes, as soon as I heard him say aggravated's off the table. Yeah, because that's the scariest one. That's, that's potentially the scariest life one. without parole. And she's like, 
I've been dealt so many bad hands, this is probably the best option I'm going to get. Show me where it's gone right so far. The trial started on September 3rd, 2019. The biggest challenge for the prosecution here is that there is no evidence that the baby was alive when it came out. That's the big question, was the baby stillborn or not? Their only evidence was that Skylar herself said the baby was gurgling a little bit when it first came out. Also, they were able to argue that since Skylar did go to the OBGYN, and this was 11 days before she ended up giving birth, the baby's heartbeat was healthy and strong at that time. She went from being a healthy baby to stillborn in just 11 days. It was also proven that Skylar did end up taking those birth control pills 11 days before the baby was born, and who knows what that would do to your body while you're carrying a baby. It didn't seem like Skylar wanted this baby. She kept it a secret from everyone, including the baby's father. What was the alternative? Let's say the baby was delivered in the bathroom that night and survived. What was her plan? She didn't have a nursery, a crib, or baby clothes. Honestly, what would she have done? Taken the baby to her parents and said, Hey, I just had a baby, and I'm going to take care of it now? Or maybe they needed to consider adoption? There was no known plan for what would happen to the baby once it was born. Instead, she was googling things like how to get rid of a baby. Skylar had wanted to get an abortion, she did not want this baby. Unfortunately, it was too far along in her pregnancy. When she found out, for her to do that, they argued that she probably did everything she could to sabotage the pregnancy. The prosecution also made the argument that Skylar's mom was obsessed with vanity and image. They said that Skylar and Jackson had extreme pressure on them to look like the perfect family. They even argued that Skylar's mom knew about the pregnancy, and this is possible apparently because the doctor's office accidentally emailed the pregnancy results to Skylar's mom. Skylar's mom confronted her and asked, What the hell is this email about? Skylar convinced her that it wasn't true and that she didn't know what it was. However, apparently, Skylar's mom was saying things like, This better not be true, or your life will be over. For someone to hide their pregnancy to the point that they give birth by themselves in their house, you've got to wonder what type of relationship Skylar had with her mom. It seems she clearly didn't feel like she could come to her in a situation like this. A lot of people argue that Skylar's mom knew about the baby and didn't want Skylar to have it because it would ruin the family's image of being perfect. If you look back at that interrogation footage, there's this clip of Skylar's mom saying, we had a perfect life. Skylar had a perfect life. <laughs> they also brought up text messages that Skylar had sent to her mom leading up to the birth. In one of these texts, she's talking about being worried to fit in that prom dress. She texts her mom and says, I'm just in freakout mode. I want to look amazing again, more than anything. I hate being like this so much. Additionally, there's a text message she sent right after she gave birth. It said, I am literally so excited now, just for dare to wear something cute. Yay, my belly is back. Why didn't she, as a mom, question what she means by that? Even if you didn't assume it was a pregnancy, why didn't they just ask her about it because she has an eating disorder? One day, she even texted her mom, saying that she had lost 20 pounds. Her mom replied to her and said, I could cry, you're literally my hero. Do you see why they are very skeptical about the parents saying they tried so hard to get Skylar help for her eating disorder? Unconfirmed whether this is true or not, apparently, it was announced to her classroom that she had lost 20 pounds, and everyone clapped for her. Skylar's mom had apparently been making Skylar lose the weight with laxatives, just so dangerous and scary that she would ask her daughter to do that. She also told her that she had to be working out at the gym on a daily basis. This is not something you do as a parent if your child has an eating disorder.
Skylar had texted her boyfriend the night after she gave birth. She said, last night was like the worst ever, but I feel so much better. I'm happy. This makes you wonder, did Brandon actually know? He claims he did not. At the trial, the pathologist took the stand and explained how they originally thought the baby was charred, but after further review, they realized there were no burn marks on the baby. However, they also said that there was no evidence that Skylar had killed her baby or that the baby was even born alive. Now, keep in mind it is hard to determine much on a fetus that has been buried for two months. The defense argued that Skylar had never cut an umbilical cord, which means it could have become detached during the pregnancy, potentially causing a stillbirth. They also pointed out that Skylar described the baby's appearance as being really white and pale, which is typically how a stillborn looks. Additionally, they argued that Skylar only gained 15 pounds during that pregnancy, which is super unhealthy. Her eating disorder was still in full force at this time, and giving the baby absolutely no nutrition could definitely cause a stillbirth. However, on September 12, 2019, the jury announced that they found Skylar not guilty on all charges. To count one, we, the jury in the above captioned case, find the defendant, Brooke Schuyler Richardson, not guilty of the offense of aggravated murder. Verdict form two, involuntary manslaughter. We, the jury in the above captioned case, do by, hereby find the defendant, Brooke Schuyler Richardson, not guilty of the offense of involuntary manslaughter. Count three, child endangerment. We, the jury, find the defendant, Brooke Schuyler Richardson, not guilty of child endangerment. Verdict form number four, we the jury in the above captioned case find the defendant Brooke Schuyler Richardson guilty of the offense of abuse of a corpse. Since Schuyler did bury the baby, she was convicted of gross abuse of a corpse. That is a felony charge and carries up to about a year in prison. The next day, Schuyler was brought in for her sentence on the corpse abuse charge, and this is when she was given three years of probation. Obviously, the family was super relieved that she wasn't going to spend the rest of her life in jail. It often gets overlooked, uh, Ms. Richardson, is just how precious life is. Your life, Annabelle's life, life is precious. Richardson's father asked the judge to let his daughter come home as soon as possible so they could help her address an eating disorder and take care of her health. I can sometimes be selfish, but I would like to think that I've become better in the knowledge that I've upset everyone and hurt so many people with what I've done. And I'm forever sorry and I, I'm so sorry. The family did say that they put her into an eating disorder program. I really do hope that will help her. During this time, they also put up a little angel statue in memory of the baby. I love to hear your comments on this. Do you think three years probation is enough? Thanks for listening to this episode. We'll be back next time of course to bring you yet another case but until then stay safe out there and please subscribe.